All right, so here we are back. See the red light? The red light. It tells you. All right, so here we are back in Oakland, Maine, in the Oakland Axe Factory Drinkwater Guitars Workshop, and uh, we're going to do some finishing. This is um, completely sanded. This is our new ergonomic model, which we still need a name for, so if you guys have any clever names, um, other than looks like a Strandberg, <laughs> um, or even looks like a Strandberg, that's fine too if you want to comment that. Any comments are always uh, appreciated, so go ahead and uh, throw that in the comments section of this video. Uh, we're going to be doing the initial uh, soak down on this one, and we're going to keep this one going. They're getting the same exact finish type. So, And what we're using today is uh, Minwax Wipe-On Poly. It's one of the most high-quality wipe-on oil-based uh, finishes um, that I've used. And what I like a lot about it is it's almost, uh, I wouldn't say water thin, but very, very, very thin compared to something like True Oil. So my first, uh, first stage um, on raw wood, which is what the Ergo is right now, is we're going to soak this thing down literally until it just stops uh, absorbing it. Then we're going to use these uh, shop towels and wipe off the, ex uh, the excess. This one is already way past that. We did this one last week, and now we're just doing light coats to, to kind of just give it a, a proper amount of durability and sheen. So we're going to start off by doing the cavities. With uh, I just poured a little bit into a measuring cup, and I'm using a foam brush. So I'm just going to wipe that generously right into the pickup cavity. Just soak it right in, or let it soak right in. I'm going to do it in the neck pocket. And this is going to soak deeply into the pores of the wood and uh, missed some spots in there there we go I'm gonna soak right in just wipe the excess you know you can brush it right in there and just remember um, raw wood especially if it's properly dried is gonna soak in a lot of this material and um, you're gonna have to just reply it, reapply it until it stops soaking in. It will soak in more on the end grain. Um, so we're just gonna just brush it right in there. And you can use you can use a foam brush like I do. You can use a rag, um, paper towels. You can even spray this stuff on if you have a a nice little spray setup that you use for oil base. I don't recommend using the same sprayer for both oil and solvent base or water base. I usually use a different sprayer for everything. All right, so I'm going to even get it into those ferrule holes, neck ferrule holes in the back there. Get all these little nooks and crannies. Just a nice generous amount. Let it soak right in wiping it, or not wiping it, but brushing it around to all the different areas. Just letting it soak right in. End grain, like I said before, is very thirsty on this type of wood, or any wood for that matter. This stuff is like a sponge. The nice thing about this is it's it soaks into the wood so it it doesn't create like a like a film you know a lot of people think of polyurethane they're actually thinking of polyester you know a lot of people um when you hear the word poly you just naturally think of fenders or you know a lot of guitars really thick poly finishes well that's completely different stuff this is uh this is a uh, woodworking polyurethane polyester which is what a lot of companies use i've used it uh, builds up the really thick, super thick plastic finishes, and that is a completely different beast. That's fiberglassing resin by any other name. And um, it's a very good finish, but it's also very heavy. And uh, I wouldn't say super difficult to use, but certainly more difficult than this. And a completely different process. Hard to shoot in the wood shop because of the long open time and tack and gets all over everything well this is really easy and it ends up looking and feeling amazing when it's done you can kind of see already how how nice that's looking and uh, we're just going to keep brushing it on until it soaks until it's basically so it's already completely absorbed on the front so i'm just going to keep on applying 
And I've got my gloves on, of course, because I don't want to be covered with sticky oil-based wood finish. This stuff will come off in a pinch with lacquer thinner or naphtha, although I do like to minimize my exposure to all that. I just keep applying, keep on applying, especially on that end grain once again. And what I've got here is just some old, uh, I've got an old towel that I've, you know, we've retired from bathroom use and now it's <laughs> been relegated to shop duty and it's just uh, I use it for stuff like this because I don't want I don't want uh, my uh, my nice perfect uh, woodworking item to be dinged on a on a bench top you know all right so this is totally like bone dry back here so we're gonna keep on applying now there's a couple things you can do if you didn't want to spend a lot this isn't gonna take a lot of time but you can use a pre-stained conditioner. Um, I don't recommend using a pre-stained conditioner on a clear coat like this uh, just because I like to make sure this finish gets deep into the pores. But uh, you can use a pre-stained conditioner, which is kind of like a thin acrylic material to seal the end grain or the entire thing. Um, it's mostly used for uh, you know, prior to adding a colored stain to keep it from being blotchy. And what it does is it makes sure it, it uh, uniformly soaks in or uniformly doesn't soak in too deep. All right, so I'm just going to see where we're at here. That's still soaking in, still soaking in. Let me go ahead and pour a little more. And I like to just pour a little bit in the bottom of a uh, disposable mixing cup. And these mixing cups are actually, I mean, they're disposable, but you can get a couple of uses out of them because um, once this stuff dries, it will peel out. And um, let's see what we've got. Really just going to soak it in there. The top looks like it's slowing down in absorption. Alrighty. Let's see what the back looks like. The back is very dry now, so we're gonna just keep on brushing that on. Now this wood has been in my shop. It was kiln dried probably in 2011. It has been in my shop um, since 2012. So you know this stuff is definitely dry all right so now it's really kind of slowing down on absorbing all right so at this stage before it starts getting too sticky uh, because it will it will start getting really sticky in just a matter of minutes um, we're going to go ahead and just wipe off all the, all the extra. As you can, I don't know if you can tell or not, I think you can tell through the screen, that really darkened up a very, very light piece of wood. Um, it'll lighten up a little bit as it dries, but it gave a lot of depth and, and color to an otherwise very uh, light and nondescript piece of swamp ash and I love what oil based finishes can do um, you know to natural wood it really does make it look absolutely wonderful now this is the kind of finish you know I keep calling it um, you know uh, a wipe on but what it is it's a varnish um, it's not an oil, it's got oil in it, like a lot of polyurethanes. So it's not linseed oil and it's not a tongue oil, it's actually a varnish made from, I believe, linseed oil and some different resins. Um, and this is exactly what it's made to do. It's made to go on uh, by hand like this. 
and the wipe off. It's made for your ease of use and durability. But what I think my favorite thing about it is it just feels so nice. And you feel everything about the wood that you like about wood, but you have protection against moisture and some protection, uh, protection against abrasion. And you're not covering up anything. So when you're prepping the wood, you have to be really careful to make sure that everything looks great. And that's why we took the uh, time to wet sand um, prior to. Because this will also highlight a lot of defects if there's defects in the wood from your from your work. Now all this is highlighting now because we were extremely careful sanding. All it's highlighting is the, the beautiful variation in grain, uh, the lovely, um, you know, discolorations that you find in wood. Um, now this is gorgeous, simply gorgeous. Now I'm going to get into some of these cavities real quick because it will pool up in the bottom of cavities and when I hang this thing up to dry I don't want it leaking out and running off because then that will create some weird run uh, kind of discolorations, darker sections which we want to avoid at all possible. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to step off camera real quick and hang this up to dry after I kind of get a little bit of a close-up here. I'm going to kick the camera. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Got to love swamp ash. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, I'm going to hang this guy up and I'm going to do some coats on the OXC so you can kind of see what the next step is. Perfect. All right, so with the OXC, we did that last week. We doused this thing. So this thing is, it has the wipe on poly deep into the wood grain. And our next step, um, well, what we've been doing for next steps after that is light coats. And you basically wipe a coat on, you buff it off almost immediately. And if you do that, say between seven and 10 times, you still have a very thin, 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 ultra thin, ultra light finish, but it has an incredibly smooth feel to it and it looks fantastic. And that's what we're gonna do. And what I do with that is I use, or in this case, I'm gonna reuse a paper towel that hasn't dried yet. You don't wanna reuse dried paper towels because of course the um, this stuff will dry fairly hard. So what I do is just dip it in there, wipe on. Kind of like the old Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off deal. This is very similar. You're gonna wax on with the wet and immediately buff it off with the dry. And that puts on the absolute thinnest, lightest coat. And it seems like um, you're not doing much but you're putting on a ridiculously light coat of, uh, of varnish. And the end result is, if you're willing to put in the time and effort, you'll get a near perfectly uh, smooth finish. Uh, something that if you were to spray this on, you'd have, uh, you know, you would have uh, orange peel, stuff like that. This, it's impossible to get orange peel. Um, it's not building up a thick film, you know, so you're, Basically just putting in just enough, you know, absolute bare minimum really of finish. And uh, it turns out pretty much perfect. And this is a very similar process to what a lot of companies do when they have like raw or you know oiled necks very similar product very similar technique and that's why it's usually an upcharge uh, because it's pretty labor intensive it's not difficult by any stretch of the imagination but it's you know it takes time you know time is money when you're building stuff so we're going to buff that off real well and I think I've got a nail I can hang this guy up on. And what I do to dry is I just, I hang these guys up from the ceiling. I crank up my actual, my heat in the shop. I've got an electric heater. I crank that thing up. 
because this stuff really wants heat, a lot of heat to dry. All right, and that guy is looking like, pretty hard to see any detail, but it's starting to look really nice. All right, so that's basically how we do the finishing with the uh, wipe on poly. Once again, that's Minwax wipe on poly and uh, something you can get at pretty much any hardware store in the United States that I, that I know of. And um, it is fantastic stuff. So if, uh, like I said before, if you have any um, questions, comments, or anything like that regarding the finishing process that we do, please uh, just throw them down in the comment section. And uh, if you have any ideas for the name of that new ergonomic guitar we're doing, you know, please feel free to share. And um, thanks for watching.